to counterfeits for your prosperity, health and safety. This event will be live on KBC Channel 1. Problem. Not, in, not only in Kenya but also uh, in the world. So by, by, by stopping unbranded uh, products from coming into the country, we'll actually be dealing with issues of counterfeit and also other forms of illicit trade because we know <laughs> Good morning. Yes, we're coming to you live from Crown Plaza where the Anti-Counterfeit Authority is commemorating the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. What you can see behind me is quite a hall full of various stakeholders including government agencies and importers and those who are in matters of trade. The conversation around counterfeits, just to give you some brief statistics, is that according to ACA, the, uh, the country loses a cool 153.1 billion shillings annually through illicit trade, while COFEC has it that the taxman misses out on 400 million shillings daily when it comes to taxes through counterfeits, or rather what you want to term as illicit trade. What you are seeing currently underway is just a short uh, Q&A situation between the stakeholders as well as ACA trying to understand that while we are marking the World Counterfeit Day, ACA has also rolled out an IPR recordation process that is meant or rather has an objective of reducing illicit trade. We are live and we've asked the stakeholders also to just log in onto our various social media platforms including KBC Live TV to just give their feedback in regard to this particular move. What uh, you can also uh, find out is that, you know, we are expecting uh, representatives from government, including the Cabinet Secretary, Industrialization, Betty Miner, as well as PS, uh, were there to just come in and give the stand that government is taking when it comes to matters of counterfeits. When you talk about counterfeits, there are different categories, and though campaigns have been running uh, with the anti-counterfeit agency focusing on creating awareness especially to consumers, uh, it's been very difficult to tell these uh, goods apart. For instance, when you say illicit trade, it is a whole hood of goods and services. For instance, when you talk about counterfeits, it's not necessarily that they are substandard, but they are passed off as, uh, you know, goods or rather even un, uh, unrecorded goods. And this particular IPR is going to ensure that those who are importing this particular products are importing the right products uh, to just try and uh, cut illicit. down illicit trade. Maybe we can have a listen in into the questions that are being posed by the various stakeholders who are here with us uh, live from uh, Crown Plaza. Questions that are posing to the ACA before we have a plenary session to just find out what this particular authority is doing to ensure that we bring down illicit trade. Now, uh, but before we hand it over to the MC, we are expecting a brief interview with the acting executive director, Frida Caberia, to help us understand what this particular IPR recordation is all about and the moves or other the objectives it aims to achieve and if this is going to af uh, affect importation or matters trade as we know it. What we know from the initial uh, presentation there from ACA is that this does not apply to goods that are going to be consumed locally and it also doesn't apply to those goods that are on transit or in trans shipment. This uh, process has already begun and come uh, July, uh, that is next month, it should be in operation. Uh, you have also been advised by ACA to just go to their website and find out exactly what the IPR recordation is, is all about so that you do not get yourself on the uh, wrong side of the law given that this is already anchored by law. When you talk about illicit trade, counterfeits also, it's fast moving consumer goods that are targeted uh, when it comes to matters of illicit trade. The figures there indeed 153.1 billion shillings that Kenya loses to illicit trade. 
a brief listen in into what uh, Mr. Okoton has to say in regard to the questions that are being posed by stakeholders this morning as we commemorate the World Anti-Counterfeit Day and also see the operationalization of IPR recordation uh, that is going to help you know ease matters of illicit trade where intellectual property rights actually are you know or rather are uh, based on um, rights that are uh, protected as uh, trademarks industrial designs uh, patents as uh, utility models and stakeholders are asking well what happens to those goods that are coming in unbranded will this be affected those who are also in the value chain who deal with matters of raw materials have already posed that question and these are some of the questions that are going to be posed at the plenary session and the ACA is going to be tackling that so that stakeholders as well as consumers can understand the impact overall impact of the IPR is going to have on matters illicit trade of counterfeit products in this room. When I cast my eyes around, I can see the men and women in charge of driving this agenda of fighting out counterfeit in this country are within us. They are here with us. And so, I want to recognize the presence of our chief guest, Wanyama Musiambo. He's the Deputy Head of Public Service and Coordinator of Agency Enforcement. Wanyama Musiambo, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Can we clap for him, please? I also want to recognize the presence of um, Miss Flora Motahi. She is the chairperson of, and, uh, of Board of Directors of Anti-Counterfeit Authority. Flora Motahi, thank you for joining us. A clap for her. We also want to recognize the presence in our midst of Miss Frida Caberia. She's the acting executive director at Anti-Counterfeit Agency. Thank you. And also, Eric Sirali, Representative. Indeed, we were just having a brief listen in into what is happening right here at the Crown Plaza as we mark the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. Now, also as we commemorate this World Day, and it's very crucial when it comes to matters trade, given the statistics that have already been made public, 153.1 billion shillings is lost annually through illicit trade the ACA that is the anti-counterfeit authority is launching an IPR recordation to try and stem that now to give us a brief on to the objective of this a particular move and how it's going to affect importation as we know it is none other than Dr. Akuten, John Akuten, who is the director uh, research policy and public awareness at the authority thank you sir thank you very much for your time just to give us a brief overview we are having stakeholders here they've come to learn what the ipr recordation is all about but first things first how will this tackle help tackle illicit trade yeah we are here today to commemorate the world and counterfeit day and basically this is a day where we bring the stakeholders together to discuss issues of counterfeiting and illicit trade in general and the focus of today's uh, event is how do we tackle uh, uh, counterfeiting and illicit trade in general uh, using technology. So we are what is called the IPR recordation. This is a system that is used to uh, fight counterfeiting and uh, it's a system that has been used elsewhere, for example, like the US, uh, China, uh, South Africa and uh, United Arab Emirates. So basically it's a technology where we fight counterfeiting at the source. Uh, quite often what we've been doing is, here is that uh, we've been fighting counterfeiting within the country where manufacturers or importers would bring in uh, uh, products into the country and then we start now chasing those products within the country. So what what uh, stakeholders have been telling us is that why can't you really fight this uh, problem uh, from the source? And that's why we have come up with this IPR recordation, which is going to be a game changer in the fight against counterfeiting and illicit trade in general. So how will it work? How it's work is...
is that uh, manufacturers will be required to record the intellectual property rights of these products into our system. So it's a, it's going to be an online kind of system where information about the intellectual property rights will be will, will be stored into our systems, looking at the description of the products, uh, the images of this particular product, so that uh, once we build this uh, database, anything that is going to be imported into the country will actually be compared with this particular database. And anything that does not conform to the database actually will be rejected. So we'll be able to deal with it. So Mr. Akoten, if uh, a manufacturer or importer does not have uh, this IPR recordation or is not in that particular register, will they be barred from doing this importation of those particular goods? Or what does that mean? Exactly. They, they, they'll be barred actually because anything that has not been recorded cannot be imported in their country. So any unbranded uh, goods which does not have any brand or any product that has not been recorded without counterfeit authority then will be barred. So they will not be allowed to enter into our country. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akoten. They're just giving us a short brief in regard to this particular function that is ha currently happening at the Crown Plaza as we mark the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. ACA, that is the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, has operationalized an IPR recordation to try and stem illicit trade. This targets manufacturers and traders who do importation, the exception of those who are doing this particular trade, or rather are doing um, transshipment or transit goods. I'm Regina Manyara, and I want to hand you over to the Master of Ceremony.
applause for Maroon Commandos. And I must admit that it's quite unfortunate that we are losing our Africanness because we have allowed that music to go to waste. We could not even stand and do a jig. It is allowed. Okay, and so the next time we invite them, kindly feel free to shake your leg, okay? And even to clap. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Maroon Commandos, for that beautiful item. It reminds me of my young, younger years when I used to listen to that music on Baba Na Mama, that is KBC. I know a lot of you can relate. I'm not going to say my age, but those were the many years before social media. It gives you a clue how old I am, definitely. And so we continue to recognize um, the presence of our visitors, or our chief guest, invited guest. And I continue to remind you that we are in the midst of the best brains when it comes to uh, matters counterfeit because we also have in our midst Dr. Bruno Linheiro. He's a secretary for trade, representing the principal secretary in the State Department for Trade and Enterprise Development. Kindly let's recognize Dr. Bruno. <laughs> and also in our presence, we have a Deputy County Commissioner, Kianbi Kemathi, uh, for Nairobi County, also standing in for Miss Flora Moroa, the County Commissioner, Nairobi County. A round of applause. And so we must start this meeting on a piety note. And so I want to request Father Nicholas Osuke to come and guide us or lead us in a word of prayer to officially kick off this program uh, today. Kindly let us arise for the word of prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, God our loving Father, I want to give you thanks for this gift of this beautiful morning. I want to give you thanks for the gift of this country, Kenya. For your servants here who dedicate their lives to continue serving all citizens in this country. And especially we want to pray for anti-counterfeit authority as we organize this event. We thank you for all who have responded to the invitation. We pray that this event we are dedicated into your eyeball hands. You may guide us, protect us, and lead us by your Holy Spirit. Whatever you are going to discuss here to be for the better of the good health of human beings here on earth as we prepare to join the kingdom of heaven. Guide us and always open our minds and hearts to always learn and always implement whatever you're going to learn today. Bless all the speakers and all presenters and we who are listeners, we may gain or carry more information from here that is going to help us and help other people all over the world. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And ladies and gentlemen, I kindly request you to remain upstanding for our beautiful national anthem, which the Maroon Commanders are going to lead us. Listen keenly to the words of our national anthem, which is one of the best in the world.
Thank you. May you take your position. And may we always remain true to the words of our national anthem. And remember to, to safeguard our boundaries. I continue to remind you that the world today is celebrating the World Anti-Counterfeit Day with a theme leveraging technology to combat counterfeiting. I will continue to give you more statistics and data as to the impact of counterfeit not only in the world but to us as a society. And if you interrogate statistics from the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, they will tell you that the country is losing or the job losses as a result of counterfeit products and illicit trade is about 7,500 people mm -hmm. losing their jobs. And when you look at the multiplying effect, then you're talking about big numbers here. And so the question has always been, how do we upgrade the war on counterfeit in this country? And today we're conversing around how do we embrace technology to help in the fight against counterfeit agency, I mean, against anti uh, counterfeit products. And I was giving you some global statistics on what kind of a mess are counterfeit products breaking to the global economy. And we are talking about $600 billion you know, worth of trade. And there is a warning that unless urgent and critical measures are put in place, this trade will continue to grow and in the next decade it is expected that unless if we do not take necessary action now this trade is going to rise to about 1.2 trillion uh, US dollars that is massive and so ladies and gentlemen without further ado I want to invite on stage the acting director executive director of anti counterfeit authority Ms. Frida Caberia to come and give or make her remarks. Kindly, let's put our hands together for Madame Frida Kaber. Good morning. Okay, the Deputy Head of Public Service and Coordinator of Multi-Agency Enforcement, the Principal Secretary, State Department for Trade and Enterprise Development, represented by Dr. Bruno Liniero, the Chairperson, Board of Directors, Anti-Counterfeit Authority, Ms. Flora Mutahi, Deputy County Commissioner, Kiambi Kimadi, Team Mayor, Country Director, Representative, Mr. Eric Sirare, Board members of the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. First, I would like to thank you all for honoring our invitation to attend to this year's World Anti-Counterfeit Day. The World Anti-Counterfeit Day is globally commemorated to raise awareness of the negative impact that the counterfeit goods have on our health safety and to national security. The recent COVID-19 crisis has led to a surge of counterfeit and substandard products in Kenya today. Recent reports from our national baseline survey, which was launched in 2020, indicate that the total value of illicit trade was 726 billion in 2017, and it had grown by 100 billion in the year 2018, which was a rise of 14%. Counterfeit products account for nearly 70% of all imports into Kenya. In Kenya, the Anti-Counterfeit Authority is a state corporation that leads in the role in organizing this event in conjunction with other government uh, agencies. This is uh, the Kenya Industrial Property Institute, KIPI, and the Kenya Copyright Board, Kikobo. We also collaborate with uh, other sector players the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, among other players. Last week, we were in Machakos County, where we held two stakeholder forums, which were to drum up the event to this event today. 
It was involving the Machakos County officials, the national government uh, officers, and the business community at large. This year's theme is on leveraging on technology to combat counterfeiting. This goes with our planned launch of the intellectual property recordation system for imports into Kenya. This technology will be a game changer in the war against counterfeits, which will involve creation of intellectual property rights database that will be used by officers at border points so that they are easily able to flag counterfeits before entering into the market. Ladies and gentlemen, SCA has put in place other mechanisms to deal with this menace. One of them is automation of the enforcement processes, which will enhance efficiency of handling and processing formal complaints. Decentralization of SCA operations by having presence in all ports of entries and collaborating with private sector and other government agencies on intelligence sharing. We will also look at compounding of offenses to ensure quicker resolution to IPR disputes which arise from time to time. I would like to take this opportunity to appreciate Trademark East Africa through the country director, Mr. Ahmed Farah, for the support offered in undertaking the National Baseline Survey on counterfeit and illicit trade, development of the National Observatory, and the Anti-Counterfeit Integrated Management System. We appreciate our chief guest, Mr. Wanyama Musiambo, the Deputy Head of Public Service and Coordinator of the Multi-Agency Collaboration Against Illicit Trade for being with us today. And on behalf of uh, management and staff of the authority, we commit to be at the forefront of the implementation of the National Anti-Illicit Action Plan. And I call upon all state agencies and private sector to strengthen their role in this regard. Thank you very much and karibuni tena to this uh, event. Now let me take this opportunity to welcome the Deputy County Commissioner, Mr. Kiambi Kimadi, to give his remarks. Thank you. Thank you. The Deputy End of Public Service and Coordination, Coordinator of Mot Agency Enforcement, Mr. Wanyama Musiambo, Principal Secretary of State Department for Trade and Enterprise Development, represented by Mr. Boro, Chair of the Board of Directors Counterfeit Authority, Ms. Flora Mutai, Acting Executive Director and Counterfeit Authority, Ms. Florinda Caveria, Frida Caveria, representatives of the national and county government present in this engagement, all protocols observed. I'm here, my name is Kimadi Kimkambi, as we've been told. I'm here to represent the, my senior county commissioner from Moroa, who is engaged somewhere else in a peace forum, and I have some remarks from her that I would wish to go through. On behalf of the Minister of Interior and Condition of National Government and County Security Team from Nairobi County, I want to welcome you all to this function. And allow me to introduce some of my colleagues from National Government and Administration Officers. I think they are, you can wave wherever you are. Thank you. I want to speak at this forum from a security perspective. Counterfeiting and illicit trade is an organized crime that poses a significant and growing threat to national security. It has serious implications that for public safety, public health, and economic stability in this country. Perpetrators of, counter, of counterfeit trade have close links to serious and organized crime, like terrorism, drug dealing, smuggling, and among other, other forms of crime. We have reported that uh, smuggling and contraband trade from neighboring countries directly fund and sustain the operations of terrorism groups like Al Shabaab. Therefore, security agencies within and without the county and the country must work together to eliminate counterfeit trade 
cut terrorism funding and discourage the operations of our threats in the neighboring country. As Rinders, responsible for security and law enforcement matters, you know very well that some, some of these battles cannot be won by one government agency alone, like the counterfeit authority. Governments and departments and agencies must work more together. I wish to report here, since last year, we had a multi-agency team that has been working to identify sources, trading points of the, the illicit drugs, the counterfeit goods, consumables within the county. And we have an elaborate reporting mechanism from the 11 sub-counties in this county. It's a daily report that is reported to our headquarters in Nyahaus, and it is forwarded to OP. And all the goods that are seized on a daily basis, the arrests, the prosecutions, are in that report. I want to recognize and appreciate our chief guest and deputy head of public service and coordinator of multi-agency enforcement, Mr. Musiambu, for the great job he has done in multi-agency coordination against EC trade. The way forward is collaboration, but it has happened on alcohol, drug abuse operations with Nakanda, Kenya Bureau of Standards, ACA, and KIA in fighting also radicalization and also border security management. Finally, the county security teams wants to assure you of our continued commitment in this endeavor. I commit to, we commit to maintain a close personal interest in the progress of how we are tackling this charity in Nairobi and in the country at large. I expect my team to fully collaborate and maintain public order in this matter. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, signed by Fro Morua County Commissioner Nairobi. Thank you very much, Mr. Kambi Kemathi. The Deputy County Commissioner uh, representing coordinator or uh, representing the County Commissioner for Nairobi County. Um, ladies and gentlemen, time now to welcome on stage Eric Sirali representing the Country Director for Trademark East Africa to also make his remarks. Thank you and welcome. A, hand, a round of applause. Uh, the chief guests, uh, Deputy Head of Public Service, uh, the representative from the Ministry of Trade, the chair of the board ACA, um, the acting executive director, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. My name is Eric Sirali, I'm the director responsible for delivering of ICT initiatives uh, in Trademark East Africa. I'm here to represent my colleague, Mr. Ahmed Farah, who sends his apologies. And I'll read his speech. All government officials, uh, development partners, of course the private sector, ladies and gentlemen, in 2018, Trademark East Africa and the ACA signed a financing agreement to be able to do various things one of them to conduct a survey that uh, the acting uh, ED has talked about um, on illicit trade, development of the trade, illicit trade observatory, 
um, out of the findings of that uh, study and of course the development of the management information system that we are launching today and of course we have also supported them in setting up various infrastructure for the ICT solutions and uh, in June of 2020 uh, we congregated of course together with SES to launch the uh, the national illicit uh, trade observatory together with the launch of the uh, baseline survey which of course has been able to provide a lot of insights in the issues around illicit trade on this auspicious occasion uh, to commemorate the world anti counterfeit day we are also here to celebrate the launch of this important system, especially for the private sector. The development of the system uh, has been made possible with the funding from the UK government. Uh, they have funded various initiatives up to a tune of about $1.6 million. And we are happy to see that a lot of progress is being made um, with this support from our partners and our financiers, uh, the UK government. We congratulate and acknowledge SEA in this momentous uh, day, and of course for their efforts that have put together to be able to reach to this point. Uh, we are all aware that SEA is a fairly new institution, and they have done quite a bit in a very short time. Uh, some of the objectives, of course, that we hope this initiative will be able to achieve include uh, enhancing of economic growth and reduction in poverty. We've heard about the, re the impact of job losses resulting from anti-counterfeit and many other things around health and loss of business opportunities. Um, we also hope that this initiative will be able to continue to be implemented in a coordinated and collaborative way and I'm happy to see the head of public service who is in charge of the multi-agency coordination. Um, we also hope that uh, we'll be able to see improved compliance and enforcement of IPR regulations in Kenya and generally the governance of intellectual property. This initiative and uh, specifically the IPL recordial system will support the private sector who are here with us today uh, heavily in the management of the intellectual property and we hope this will have very great benefits for your businesses. Um, we all know the impact uh, consequences of the uh, counterfeit when it comes to competitiveness and pricing and all those uh, lost opportunities. At Trademark we hope that similar interventions such as this uh, will be able to em emerge, uh, of course, beyond our borders because we trade with other partners. We hope that we'll be able to see such initiatives um, finding their ways uh, with our neighbors in East Africa and beyond so that we are able to curb this vice beyond our territories. Uh, we appreciate that this digitization effort at SEA's operations and services will further enhance the fight against illicit trade and protection of intellectual property. Uh, once again, I uh, would like to congratulate SEA and all the stakeholders. Thank you. Well, another round of applause to time now to welcome on stage and before I do so uh, according to OECD and I'm continuing to give you this information can somebody guess what is the most counterfeited product in the world they there will be something for you there will be something for you who wants to guess? Hmm? Nobody got it. 
it is shoes shoes are the most counterfeited i don't want you to look at your neighbor's shoes eh? i don't want to attract trouble here but shoes are the most counterfeited products in the world accounting for about 22 percent of all counterfeited products in the world shoes because we all wear shoes right and so ladies and gentlemen without further ado help me to welcome on stage miss flora mutahi the chairperson uh, of the anti-counterfeit authority and yours. Hey. So our chief guest, a good friend, Nyama Musiambo, Deputy Head of Public Service and Coordinator of the Multi-Agency Enforcement, our fellow board members led by Bruno Liniro, who's representing our Ministry of Industrialization, Ambassador Johnson Wairu, Acting Director, Frida Caberia, uh, Mr. Kimadi Kiambi, I know another Kimadi Kiambi, clearly not you, Deputy County Commissioner of uh, Nairobi County, Eric Serali, um, representing Timea, and a good friend, Ahmed Farah, give him our greetings. Private sector representatives, there are lots of you in the room, I can see Cam, I'm sure Chamber, um, all our partners. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. So industry-wide, we have had um, huge losses and large, we lose huge losses and large amounts to counterfeiters. These losses not only affect our, our producers of genuine items, but also involve a lot of social costs. The ultimate victim of unfair competition are really the consumers. They receive poor quality goods at an excessive price and are sometimes exposed to public um, to health and safety issues. Government itself also loses out on large amounts of unpaid taxes and incur large costs in enforcing intellectual property rights. There's also an increasing concern that counterfeiting is related to other criminal activities such as trading in narcotics, money laundering, terrorism, just to name a few. And you've heard it is estimated that trade in world in counterfeit goods is now worth more than 5% of world trade. I understand you're saying 600 billion, five times you said the size of Kenya. So these are, these, this is a war really that must be won. But this is not a simple war to lose at all. So today and every day, I mean so to today and every year on this day, we celebrate and commemorate the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. And what it is for us is a time to sit down, to reflect, to see our progress, but really to chart the way forward on this menace that, like I'm saying, is taking up quite a large percentage of global economics. In Kenya, we undertook a national baseline study, like you heard, and um, we found in the study, Kenya was um, losing 726 billion shillings. This is 2017. A year later, is there a gift for somebody who wins the prize? I'd like you to guess what the number was. It's been mentioned. 826, a whole whooping one billion within a year. That is Kenya, which is one country out of a hundred and something. So like I'm saying, it is not a small war. And since then, unfortunately, we've not been able to do a study, obviously, because of the pandemic that was, you know, that was with us. I think um, this is time we actually st sat down and actually did yet another study. But as you do know, during this period and during the pandemic period, we did find counterfeit, um, you know, virus fighting issues, you know, we, you know, the sanitizers. So these guys don't even care for our health. They don't care for nothing. It is really just what lines their, their pockets. While most countries have some trade in counterfeit goods, some have become really, really notorious in producing and exporting large quantities of these fakes to others, boosting really their economies 
but they are crippling others. Our study showed that the Asians for us are where a lot of our counterfeit goods seem to be coming from. And actually I believe there's a figure as high as 80% of counterfeit goods come into the country. Doesn't mean we don't manufacture because um, last year and a couple of years we've been taking a sectoral approach. And you tend to find when we go into, we went into the agricultural um, Osingishu, that whole area last year, and it, I mean it was surprising. From seeds to fertilizers to the packaging of them, I mean there was counterfeiting. So we also do our own counterfeiting despite only saying that it is a, is a fight that comes from outside. And our study showed um, hotspot areas, of course Nairobi the most. I think it was Eldoret, which was driven a lot by this trade, and it comes just before the planting season. Just before the planting season is when now these people are rampant, and then they go back down. What does that do? Of course, that whole section doesn't do well, and we continue in this vice of poverty and, uh, and hunger among us. Of course, we know the, 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 the products that are counterfeited. I understand now shoes. I don't think in Kenya we counterfeit shoes yet, but we do import a lot of counterfeit shoes. I shall be looking a bit more closely. But ele electronic equipment, I mean, um, the cables, the, the construction, I mean, we know them. You're all in the room and we know what it is doing. But for me, I think one of the biggest is just the public health and safety. So ladies and gentlemen, like I mentioned, this is a menace that we must keep our, our finger on the pulse on. Companies as well, as enforcement agencies, are becoming increasingly aware of the problems of counterfeiting. All companies actually need to make sure that they trademark, that, that their trademarks are adequately protected to implement anti and to implement anti-counting policies to deal with the menace. A number of technologies such as holograms, smart cards, biometric markers and inks can be employed to protect and authenticate genuine products. These devices vary considerably in degree of sophistication and cost. However, in order to be implemented, the Technology really, really must be cost effective, compatible with the product, and the distribution chain resistant and durable. Enforcement agencies are obviously another way to fight and combat this measure. And as you know, the ACA was established by the Anti Counterfeit Act in 2008 to combat this using a four pronged approach. We do enforcement where we undertake investigations, we see suspected counterfeit goods, we arrest offenders, and destroy them. We do public awareness and outreach through open forums, roadshows, media campaigns, and exhibitions. We have actually trained 420 police officers, Mr. Musiambo, you'd be happy to know, 820 magistrates and judges, and held over 21 county security committee sensitization forums. For me, that is one of the areas where we've really, that has really been successful. When we sensitize counties, especially down to the regional level, we do find a lot of people saying, we didn't even know this was counterfeit, or we didn't know where to take our challenges. And all we are doing as ACA is telling them, this is where you bring our issues, and also, the, of course, the security agents. Training to build capacity of law enforcement agencies and other stakeholders. And I must thank you, um, the private sector, because you do actually come and help us. Train, uh, train us on your, on, on your products to upskill us, because the sophistication of these counterfeiters is something next to none. And our fourth arm is um, research. And this one is really to inform strategy, awareness, enforcement, and policy. We undertook the, the baseline study, like you heard, on the extent, and this is where we found the numbers that we do, and we continue to, 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 to research and to actually benchmark with other countries globally. But fighting this menace is also without its fair share of challenges. Lack of information sharing has really been cited as one of the largest um, challenges in combating counterfeit. Increased international trade, emerging markets, is yet another one. Increased share of products that are attractive to copy such as branded clothing, software, shoes like we have had. Advances in technology, we are experiencing sophistication of illicit trade crimes due to advanced, advanced and dynamic IT. We have engaged online markets, we have emerging online markets and IT is now an intermediary in the supply chain, cutting the conventional warehousing and transport, which was actually easier to intercept. With modern technologies, one can copy anything including trademarks, holograms, barcodes. 
copying and passing off is now a lot, lot easier. Internally, our challenges, despite the National Consumer Survey showing the level of public awareness of illicit trade has actually grown. It's 64.14. Counterfeiting is not going down. It's something that actually continues to perplex us. And we wonder, is the challenge poverty? Ignorance. What really could be driving this? We also have budgetary constraints and capacity challenges. As ACA, we are operating at a suboptimal level with um, 117 staff against 260. And that's why we thank you, our partners, for really coming to join us to help us augment um, our numbers in this fight. There's also a lack of judicial support. They don't seem to understand it completely. We have trained 880, but we, con we must continue training them. They ne we need to look at this as economic sabotage because that's exactly what it is. It is robbing us of our own revenues and it is taking the lives of our own citizens. And let us not ignore the criminal nature of this menace that will question the integrity of all of us who are around it. So despite these challenges, we have made some inroads. Our biggest su success was through a collaboration in 2018 when we established the multi-agency teams with the executive level and technical working groups to strengthen multi-agency interventions and collaborations. Our enforcement team actually seized counterfeit goods worth 3.4 billion and destroyed counterfeit goods worth 1.4. We all know how this fight went eventually. The state started, we started feeling that to not protect Akura, the small traders are, are, are upset. So what we were discussing, in fact, actually today with Mr. Musiambo, is how can we take the learnings of that action of the multi-agency and make it friendly? You can't, there's no real friendly way to curb crime, but there's a way where you can do it where both sides actually see the importance. They'll not stop, but basically we might find, we need to find a way to get more buy-in. We've also collaborated with private sector who give us intelligence and we've developed our own Sumoto motion to try and bring these counterfeiters to book. We've co collaborated with the security agencies, National Illicit Trade Observatory. We've worked closely, again, with you in training our staff. We've developed an intelligence-led unit at the ACA to help us profile counterfeiters so that we're able to smoke them out. We've collaborated, like we said, with the judiciary, and we continue with all of you in this room to fight it in one way or another. So as you can see in Kenya, ACA, we do play quite an important role in information sharing, collaboration, working with enforcement agencies, and raising awareness. But is this enough? Is this enough to combat $600 billion globally, 5% world trade locally, I mean, um, world trade, but in Kenya, 628 billion. Perhaps because we've not done our study, we are standing, we are standing at 100, uh, at, at 1,000. So over the years, what is the way forward? Over the years, the management and the board and the research, we, we started benchmarking and looking at what is happening around and started looking to see how, what are the other effective solutions that we can implement. And after careful de delibera deliberating and noting that 80% of counterfeit goods come from outside, this is when we came up and we said Kenya is now ready for recordation. Rated as one of the most effective enforcement tools in prohibiting importation of counterfeit goods. It is actually applied in Indonesia, where the law requires recordation with the Di Directorate General of Intellectual Properties for imports. UAE, the Dubai Customs Department, use a trademark recordation system to combat the entry of illicit goods. South Africa, under the Counterfeit Goods Act 1997, Owners of intellectual, uh, intellectual property rights through application grant commission for customs power to seize and detain counterfeit goods or suspected counterfeit goods imported in the country. Also in the United States, the US um, Customs and Border Control is charged with protection of intellectual property rights and guarding against the infringement and trademarks by administering recordation of trademarks recorded by the US Patent and Trademark Office on the principal registrar and copyrights registry of the US Copyright Office. So nothing new globally, but new to us. We amended the Anti-Counterfeit Act through the Miscellaneous Act in 2018 
to provide for a recordation of intellectual property rights. The recordation law calls for creation of a database of IPR information relating to trademarks, copyrights, trade names, for all goods to be imported into the country. We need to stop this at our borders. 80% we can read at our borders. The data will be used by border and customs officers to verify goods to be imported and prevent counterfeit products before entering the country. And this can only assist us in the battle as we request you to join as our partners on this worthy cause. No, no innovative tools, ladies and gentlemen, no innovative tools against illicit menace, um, illicit menace would be met with open hands. I don't think when you come, when the doctor tells you you're going into surgery, it's, it's not painless. You know, and you sign the consent form, and you do it. Why? Because you know it is important. So I believe it is time to take this bold move and actually adopt recordation. Like I say, it will not be without pain and challenges. And we've heard the challenges that you're bringing up. And we are willing to listen. You already noted we have, we, we have removed the, you know, the, the starting line to January of next year. And for those of you who had paid, um, your money will be... illicit trade. She's a voice in corporate Kenya and we all know the work that she has done in the past to try and make our country safe from counterfeit uh, products. And so thank you very much Flora and uh, please continue with the work that you are doing together with other uh, players in this industry. Um, I have another present for the person who is going to respond to this question. And uh, I think, and I want to believe that Maroon Commandos, the challenge has been thrown your way. We are of the opinion that you are up to the challenge. You can decide to let us down, but there will be consequences. <laughs> anyway, uh, so the next question is, um, I want you to guess which is the th world's third most counterfeited product? Hmm? Yes. Say that again? Jewelry. She got it. And so for your present, can we clap for her? That is a good present enough. How many people have received a round of applause here? And so you are one of them. Keep it up. Thank you so very much. And now, without further ado, I want to invite Bruno, Dr. Uh, Bruno Liniru. He's a trade secretary, star department. Uh, for Trade, Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. And as it has become our culture, let us put our hands together for Dr. Linier. Bidhaa bandia au bidhaa gushi bado ni kero kuu kwa uchumi wa taifa letu ndio maana tumekusanyika hapa leo tumejumuika tunaposherehekea siku hii kuu kwamba tuhamasisha wananchi wetu kuhusu kupigana na biashara ya bidhaa gushi uh, Deputy Head of Public Service and Coordinator of the Multi Agency Enforcement Team wana wanyama Musiambu the chair of the board of directors of Ant Counterfeit Madam Flora Mutahi, the Deputy Commissioner Nairobi County, Bwana Kiambi Kemadi, uh, Team East Africa, represented by Eric Sirari, the Acting Executive Director and Counterfeit Authority, Frida Kaberia, officers from the National Government Agencies and County Government of Nairobi, and our viewers online on various platforms, 
Uh, good morning. Uh, I stand here to represent the Ministry of Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development. First, apologies from the Cabinet Secretary. She is away leading the Kenyan delegation in Geneva in the MC12 WTO talks. Also, apologies from my PS, uh, Ambassador Johnson Weru. Again, we held up in another official function. My name is Dr. Bruno Leniro, Secretary of Trade, uh, State Department for Trade. Uh, thank you for having us here, especially to commemorate the World and Counterfeit Day 2022, whose ostensibly purpose is to raise public awareness on matters dealing with trade in counterfeits and also develop collaborative frameworks at all levels and find action areas to combat counterfeiting and to a large extent, illicit trade. The State Department for Trade and Enterprise Development therefore appreciates the Anti-Counterfeit Authority for organizing the World Anti-Counterfeit Day to discuss initiatives for productive conversations towards building synergies and strengthen partnerships to address illicit trade in the country. Therefore, the State Board for Trade and Enterprise Development is committed towards strengthening these efforts outlined in the implementation matrix of the National Action Plan to combat illicit trade. I note with appreciation that they are in line with the national trade policy that calls for support and putting up measures to protect Kenya's domestic trade from unfair trade practices. The government therefore is committed to improving the business environment in Kenya to make the country the preferred destination for local and international investors as part of the broad government industrial development program, that is the Kenya Industrial Transformation Program, we will continue to support efforts geared towards the delivery of the development agenda under the big four pillars of manufacturing, affordable housing, health care for all, and food security. We cannot achieve these pillars if we cannot fix trade in counterfeit goods as well as promote fair trade practices in this country. I want to particularly assure our manufacturers, investors, and Kenyans that the government has a strategic agenda and plans for combating, counterfeiting, and illicit trade in general. As I conclude, I'd like to appreciate my senior, who is also Wanyama Musiambu, the Deputy Head of Public Service, who was appointed by His Excellency the President to coordinate this war and rather to coordinate the multi-agency enforcement team against illicit trade. You have achieved a lot, sir, in this war, and I believe we will continue to work together towards full implementation of the National Action Plan to combat illicit trade. Allow me to welcome him, uh, and I would say, ni wajibu wangu sasa ni mwalike mgeni wetu rani, wana wanyama usiambo aja tutubie na atupe mawaitha. Asante ni. Thank you very much, Dr. Bruno, for welcoming me here to make remarks. <clears throat> um, the chair of the board of the board of directors, the Anti Counterfeit Authority, Madam Flora, the executive director, Madam Caberia Frida. My brother, the Dr. Uh, Bruno, standing in for the PS. Buana Deputy County Commissioner, standing in for the County Commissioner Nairobi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, private sector stakeholders, all of us here who have taken our time to be here. With humility, once more I say good morning. We seem to be, I don't know, because we are fighting illicit 
uh, goods in the country or what is happening? Good morning. And because we are done, I will try to be as much as possible, very brief. Because I look at the faces and I see we are not very enthusiastic. Am I right or my assessment is wrong? It's wrong. Eh? Let us participate. Am I right or I'm wrong? I'm wrong. So we are enthusiastic. Very good. Then we can go. Now, basically, I'm here to launch this new facility. That is my main task. We have had speeches, we have had remarks. So mine will be very brief, specifically to launch the facility and then we, do, we move to the next level. But before we do that, maybe I'll have one or two uh, remarks to make. And uh, first and foremost, I want to say that I'm privileged to be here today, to be participating in this forum where we are marking the sensitization globally regarding issues of anti-counterfeit, uh, sensitizing ourselves as a country and joining the rest of the world to say that here is a problem and then how do we fix the problem. So I must say the SCA board led by Madam Flora and the director and the members of the board and the staff Thank you for inviting me to be part of this process. Very, very briefly, you've heard of the multi-agency. I think as I sat there, every other speaker mentioned about the multi-agency team. And I just want to confirm that multi-agency in all our aspects of government operations is the way to go. It is not only limited to the fighting the anti counterfeit goods in this country or fighting illicit trade only but it goes beyond that that for us as government across board we have adopted the multi agents approach in dealing with most of the issues in this country because that way then there is no excuse of people or government departments or government functionaries or government agencies working in silos and saying, you know, giving excuses that probably one or two issues have not been addressed because one agency has done its part and the other agency has not done its part. But to be able to build a synergy across government, we have now adopted the multi agents approach and therefore across government you will see more often than not the use of the word multi-agents. And indeed, it has helped us to be able to achieve quite a lot because now we don't have excuses and we have limited, if not eradicated, the whole question of working in silos. And therefore, in this fight against illicit uh, fighting counterfeits, we have been very, very aggressive, particularly since the year 2018, when none other than His Excellency the President directed that for us to be able to achieve the envisaged 15% for manufacturing to get to 15% GDP by the year 2022, which is today, which is this year, we had to present directed that we had to address the issue of illicit trade much more aggressively than hitherto. And from that time, the multi-agency teams, the multi-agency team whose members were put together have indeed done quite a commendable job. And uh, we have various agencies, some are here. The Kenya Revenue Authority, I hope it is represented here the Kenya Bureau of Standards, and then the, the, the parent uh, agency itself that has invited us here today, the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, the other agencies like uh, the Pharmacy and the Poisons Board, the Weights and Measures, uh, Public Health, 
immigration, just to mention a few that were put together. And the, this agency is hit the road running. And we were able, we have been able to do one or two things. And at least the Kenyan population has been sensitized that indeed multi agency is the way to go in all aspects of government. Ladies and gentlemen, we must appreciate that indeed we are not here just because we want to do a ritual. But it is a serious conversation, a serious discourse, where we are asking ourselves, where have we come from? Where are we and where are we going? Because counterfeiting is indeed a menace. It is not only an economic threat, it's also a security threat. And it is for that reason that we have come together under the umbrella of the mild agents to be able to attack it from all fronts. Because if we don't do that, then the security implications that will come from that direction of counterfeited products have serious consequences, would have serious consequences for this country. And therefore, look at it from the economic point of view, look at it from the security point of view, look at it from the social point of view, look at it across, and then you will see, even culturally, you see that we have an elephant in the house, an elephant that we must eliminate, an elephant that we must remove. And so as we sit here, we must acknowledge that indeed we have a job to do, and this job, we are not going to finish it today because as we sit and plan, those involved in the same are also planning how to counter what we are doing because they want to do the shortcuts. They want to earn a quick shilling. And therefore, as we do one thing, they do the other thing. And that's why we must have the resolve to be able to fight and fight smart and ensure that we win. And let me give you the comfort, particularly our brothers and sisters in the private sector, and especially those uh, whose properties have been infringed upon, the intellectual property rights. The comfort is that the government is committed. The government is committed to ensure that your properties, to ensure that those doing clean business, those doing clean trade will be protected by government continuing to give an enabling environment for proper clean business to thrive. So we look at what we've done and where we are today, we can say yes, we have given comfort and we will continue to give comfort to the private sector and to other players in the economy that the government is on top of the situation and nothing has been lost and nothing will be, lo will be lost, and we have now even engaged a higher gear, and that is why we are here today, to be able to do what we are doing. It is the duty and the responsibility of all of us to ensure that our economy thrives. When the economy thrives, we are talking about jobs. When the economy thrives, we are talking of wealth creation. And therefore, it is not only the duty of one side. Maybe we sit back and say the government, it is a collaboration of the public sector, private sector to ensure that these things are done. And they are done for us today and for posterity. And therefore, let us tighten our belts. Let us continue moving forward. Ladies and gentlemen, Having said what I've said, I just wanted to read some remarks because I was talking off the cuff. And I know one person can say, this fellow just came to walk here and the sweet talkers because he was just talking off the head. 
I have a very serious speech here to make. But I was just because you, you, you looked a bit dull, so I decided also to go dull by talking off the cuff. I think now we are there. Are we there? Are we there? Madam Flora, uh, the, the chair of the board, you said it very clearly that we've made a serious achievement from 2018 uh, to date, and we continue to do. If you look at the amount of illicit uh, goods that the Malt Edges has netted for that period, it is in billions of shillings. And that tells you the level of threat that we have across there. And that tells you why we should tighten our belts and even go further. We have been able to do that. And it is my, it is my privilege today to thank all the parties that have been involved, the agencies that were involved, that they continue to be involved to ensure that we are able now to assure Kenyans that indeed the environment is in safe hands. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm pleased to join you as we commemorate this year's World Anti Counterfeit Day. The Executive Office of the President acknowledges the importance of the World and Counterfeit Day to inform about the reality and the consequences of trade in counterfeiting. We recognize this day because counterfeiting and illicit trade is a matter of public interest and public concern since it has multifaceted effects on every each one of us, on every individual, every organization, and even governments all over the world. Kenya's development priority areas and preparedness include that Kenya, like any other economy, is facing the wrath of counterfeiting and illicit trade. We cannot have economic development and growth unless we put up structures that support economic development, that, that support industrial development through manufacturing. To accelerate economic development, the government has prioritized the manufacturing sector under the Big Four Agenda Framework of Development, targeting to have the sector's contribution to GDP rise from 8% year 2017 to 15% year 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, this cannot happen if we let and allow counterfeiting and illicit trade to thrive. As a government, the legal basis for protecting intellectual rights holders and legitimate trade is founded in the following areas. One is the constitution Two, international agreements that the government has signed, statutes, the common law, and the government policy. The Kenyan Constitution, under Section 45, 45, obliges the government to protect and enforce intellectual property rights. In addition, we have a number of other legal instruments to combat counterfeiting. In order to tighten the policy around intellectual property enforcement, the Cabinet approved the Intellectual Property Bill 2020 that looks forward to the combination of the parallel intellectual property related acts and the calls for merger of all the intellectual property related agencies that are namely the Kenya Copyright Board, KECOP, the Kenya Intellectual Property Institute, KIPI, and the Anti-Counterfeiting Authority, 
SEA so as to form one intellectual property office of Kenya, EPOC. Together with this, Kenya is a member of the World Intellectual Property Organization and the World Trade Organization and has also signed its signatory to various agreements and treaties and several other major international and regional intellectual property conventions like the African Regional Industrial Property Organization. These memberships indicate the commitment of the government towards protection of intellectual property rights. Today, four years ago, His Excellency the President directed the formation of a multi-agents task force to combat illicit trade that was embedded later on in a national action plan against illicit trade. The action plan was to address the challenges faced by the manufacturing sector and the genuine traders due to illicit trade and furthermore substandard goods posed health and safety risks to our consumers and very importantly the loss of government revenue as a result of tax evasion. Mild agents team managed to seize goods worth over 3.0 billion and the confiscated goods worth over 13.3 billion. And this journey continues. You remember the statistics who were given by the MC, the MC? You can see if within that period alone we have been able to confiscate this and we continue. And as Frida alluded to it, that during the period when we, at the height of the COVID-19, we were able to slow down our activities because of the challenges of the COVID. So you can imagine if we had not slowed down because of COVID, particularly the year 2020 and the 2021, you can imagine the kind of statistics we will be giving. Today, going by, the, by, by this year's theme, leveraging technology in the fight against counterfeit trade, the intellectual property uh, rights recordation aims to prevent counterfeit imports by developing an IPR database for goods to be imported into the country and using that, uh, that database to be able to check imports for counterfeit goods. Ladies and gentlemen, it is worth noting that Kenya is the second country in Africa to, the, to adopt the IPR recordation after the Republic of South Africa, which administers recordation through their companies and intellectual property commission. Why are we doing this? The aim of the property right recordation includes to prevent counterfeit imports, and that is the key issue into Kenya. And this will translate into proactive protection of health and the safety of the consumers. Number two, the IPR owners will be protected from unfair competition from counterfeit imports. Traders and importers will have a platform to confirm the genuineness of goods prior to importation. And this will in turn cushion them from law enforcement consequences such as seizures and prosecutions. Remember what we are doing here today. We launch and we implement. We will have cut almost by half what we are doing because we will be able to know exactly what is coming in before it comes in. Before we start running around ourselves and doing, you know, chasing each other up and about, we will be able to know what is it that has come in and what is it that is coming in and what is illegal before it even comes here. And therefore, we will save a lot of time in doing maybe what we do now. Because as we know, learning is a continuous process. And with the technology, we will be able to cut down on a lot of energy by being able to detect a fast hand before we even start chasing each other in the streets regarding these goods. So 
we emphasize the importance of technology and we want everybody, we request everybody to support this initiative. This facility that we are about to launch because it's going to help us save time, it's going to help us save our traders, it's going to help us save the importers, the agony of having to fight with the counterfeits. The anti-counterfeit authority remains committed to protecting the public from harmful counterfeit products and goods. SCA continues to enlighten the public on the dangers of counterfeit goods through sensitization and training forums. Before I conclude, I want to make an appeal, and this is the appeal, that counterfeiting is corruption. When we talk about corruption, it's a big thing. And sometimes when people talk about corruption, and we have noticed in this country mostly, the, the fingers are very fast to move, to point at government, to point at government functionaries, to point at government agencies. But nobody, rarely do we say that counterfeiting is a form of corruption. And it's a corruption that has gone in almost all sectors of the economy. We have been told here that the most counterfeited items in this country, we've been told by the, the chair and the, 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 director, the director, the electronics, we have been told here jewelry, we have been told shoes, and many other things. But nobody, all of us, we never point the fingers in that direction when we talk about corruption. So I want to emphasize and appeal that first and foremost, corruption is indeed corruption. I mean, counterfeiting is corruption. Because you wanted to get where you didn't invest. You want, like when you are stealing the intellectual property of another person, you are actually taking where you didn't invest. You are taking where you didn't sweat for. It is corruption. And therefore, when we talk about corruption, let us look at corruption in totality. And so counterfeiting is corruption. It is a short. It is unethical. It is immoral. So, in fact, one solution would be if all of us became patriotic, patriotic Kenyans. And we say this country is our country. And let us do the right thing individually before we even point fingers. What is it that I'm doing? And what is it that you're doing? And what is it that all of us are doing in our spaces? That way, we will be able to move away from these issues that we are talking about, shortcutting, unethical behavior, and, and so on and so forth. And therefore, I want to assure you that the Kenya government is fully committed and has remained steadfast in providing an enabling business environment for the realization of economic growth and economic development. My parting shot, those involved in unethical business activities of counterfeiting shall be isolated and prosecuted. On this one, there are no apologies to make. On this one, the resolve is there. On this one, the commitment of government is there. And therefore, as we do, we come up with various approaches, various uh, ways of dealing with counterfeiting. The warning remains to those who do the shortcuts, to those who are involved in counterfeiting and other mild practices that are corrupt in nature, that the government will isolate them, will prosecute them, we respect the rule of law and we will do exactly that because as you all know the singular duty of government is pro to protect lives and the property of its citizens and through counterfeiting if it's allowed to grow we will be threatening the lives of kenyans and threatening the property of kenyans and that is the responsibility number one of government that we will protect 
lives and property. Now, when Kenyans are subjected to goods that are of substandard, goods that are uh, counterfeited, then we will be threatening the lives of Kenyans. And the government will not allow the lives of Kenyans to be threatened. The government will not allow the property of Kenyans to be compromised. So anybody going in that area should know that the action will be taken fast, firmly, and swiftly. And on that note, I say thank you so much for giving, this, giving me this opportunity to be able to share with you and to give you that government commitment that we are on this journey, we will not relent until we clean our business environment. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Another round of applause for Wanyama Musiemu. The Deputy Head of Public Service and Coordinator of Multi-Agency Enforcement. Thank you for your words and um, for the work that you are doing with your team to rid the country of uh, counterfeit goods. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come or we arrived at that critical juncture uh, where we're going to launch the recordation of intellectual property rights system. We've been talking about it this morning time now to launch this system officially but before we do so we're going to invite maroon commandos for that special item that was re requested by the chair and for your information maroon commandos is one of the oldest bands in this country it was started back in 1970 it is a military band that was founded by habel kifoto so let's put our hands together for Maroon Commandos. Shamba, Ye Pushay, now we 
kujenge taifa wanangu kumekuja amkawe ni shule elimu ndio msingi wa maendeleo barani kumekuja amkawe ni kazi jiepushe na uvivu tujenge taifa uvivu ndio adui mchezi wa taifa jiepushe na uvivu tujenge taifa Taking but for taking us back in time, I'm sure many of you can relate to that song. Yes. And Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, eh? the Babana Mama of Broadcasting, and Maroon Commandos, you do not have any idea what that song used to do to us in the morning, especially during the cold season. You do not want to wake up, but all of a sudden you hear that song, and you have to wake up and go to school. We all remember those beautiful days. Thank you very much for such a beautiful item. Time now to launch the system. And I want to request the executive table, uh, led by the head of public, uh, the deputy head of public service and coordinator of Marty Agency Enforcement, Wanyama Musiambo, uh, to come to the stage so that we can launch officially the recordation of intellectual property rights uh, system. Kindly join us right here uh, so that we can launch this uh, important system. Um, we're going to do it from the podium. There is a button to be pressed. And so I'm requesting the technical team. Yes, just kindly come over here. I'm going to request the technical team to also join us here so that we ensure that we press the right button. And Wanyama Musiambo, I understand you're going to press the button. And there will be a countdown from 10 to 1, and so we're being requested to be upstanding when we get to 5, so that uh, 
we can clap for the um, uh, system to go live. And so without further ado, I request the technical team now to join us in doing this. When Yama Musiembo, it's your moment to shine, to press the button. Let's see how you're going to press it. This is the button. Yes, sir. Yes. And when Yama Musiembo is ready to press the button. And the button has been pressed. Thank you very much and now the system is live now it's time for importers now to go and log in uh, key in your details and then the rest will be done kindly take your position and now we are getting into the moment of what we are calling our time for critical dialogue whereby we're going to have a team on stage to help respond to some of the questions that you have posted so far and some of the questions that you may be having. And so, I want to request uh, Nyama Musiambo to come to the stage kindly and Flora Mutahi, the chairperson of um, ICE ACA, Samuel Matano, the Vice Chair of Anti-Illicit Trade Subcommittee at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, kindly come to the front. Dr. John Continue working alone, one department. And therefore, you will find the ACA is critical in this area and other players on the need basis to ensure that 
what is happening all of us know and all of us can partake of it and all the agencies involved can be able to contribute and ascertain that indeed uh, what is happening is for the interest of all of us so that we don't run back and say oh this one we didn't know we didn't see we didn't do we didn't participate so bottom line the answer to that question is that even in this one the multi agents approach is key very good and uh, thank you for you know emphasizing on that point that um, the multi-agency team is going to work with all the stakeholders to, in the utilization of this system. And I want to turn now to uh, Flora Mutahi. Uh, so when is the IPR um, recordation kicking off and what are the sanctions for non-implementation? Thank, thank you very much. Um, as you heard, we had um, put a deadline, I think, of July, um, to kick off in July. But of course, there was a lot of hue and cry. A lot of people didn't understand it. And we said, let us take a step back give them six, give us six months to talk to collaborate so that we get on the same page so we are saying by first of january is when now record record recordation must, must be done mm -hmm. i do know there's a little bit of a controversy is it um is it um mandatory or not because there are some countries where it is not mandatory but i think um the position as we stand right now is is it should be because that is what is really going to help us curb it. If we make it non-mandatory, then it's going, uh, you know, I guess it will become a, a system in futility. We've spent a lot of time and money and we are convinced. The board is persuaded with management that this is the way that we are really going to reduce um, counterfeit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there are conversations around on how to make this process mandatory. Yes, there are conversations. No, uh, there are conversations really about can we all sit on the table together? Can we see the importance mm -hmm. of actually doing this together? Doing this together. Thank you very much. And you're talking about uh, January 2023? Yes, January 1st, 2023. And for the few that had recorded, yep. we appreciate and we're going to carry forward. And for the rest, let's not wait. You know, Kenyans, we have this habit of when we have a deadline, mm -hmm. we then go running and saying, oh, I haven't registered my Kura here. I haven't done, I haven't done. We need to just sort of, uh, we are, we're sort of encouraging people to record with us so that we go through the pains together and make sure by January 1st we are ready because that is how we can then rid our country of this menace. Thank you very much, Flora Mutahi. And, and I want to turn to Shifa's counsel, uh, uh, Gilbert Langat. Well, your members play a key role in the importation and exportation uh, process. What measures has the council put in place to ensure you do not facilitate illicit trade? Um, thank you. Um, yes, uh, I come from the Shippers Council of Eastern Africa. We represent uh, importers and exporters. Um, it's not for us to facilitate illicit trade. We want to facilitate um, genuine and uh, genuine trade. However, we still have aspects of uh, illicit trade that happens, and we've heard uh, the numbers that you're talking about. What we are doing as a Shippers Council is actually collaborate with the government agencies. We collaborate with the SEA. Uh, we collaborate with CAPS. We actually sit in some of these institutions um, to ensure that we actually uh, are compliant. But we also carry out awareness, substantial amount of awareness through our own networks and also with these agencies. SEA is one of them. We had one last week about this. I think the main concern that people have is at what cost is this compliance? And I think those are the issues that we need to address. Um, it costs a lot to comply in terms of how much we pay to say if we do uh, the recording. How do we um, ensure that everyone complies? And those are the issues that we need to discuss. And um, make it easier. And uh, the best way to do is actually to go the multi agency way where whatever we are doing with CAPS, we are doing with SEA, all of them are actually, CAPS are now re uh, registering products. Why can't we use the registration of products? Why can't we use. Um, then and uh, COC as one program that actually works for all of us so that people then become compliant in everything that we do. And I think that is the best way to approach this. Thank mm -hmm. you. Very well. Thank you, um, uh, Langat. And I want to turn to uh, Mr. Samuel Matano, the Vice Chair of uh, Anti-Illicit Trade Subcommittee at the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Uh, wh what do you see as the benefit of IPR recordation to your members? Thank you. 
Saham jambo ni nyote. Uh, thank you for for that uh, question. Uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to just assure you that uh, I'm sitting here on behalf of uh, my chairman of the committee in CAM that uh, fights uh, counterfeit, and I'm the genuine article uh, recorded by Joseph over here, so I'm not counterfeit as I sit here. But uh, on a serious note, for us as the manufacturers, I think it's been a long journey for us to reach uh, where we are with the uh, recordation and it's a good thing because for us uh, recordation would address the issue of counterfeit right at the entry points. The entry points into Kenya are well defined and once counterfeit product has entered and is scattered throughout the country, the task becomes much harder to fight uh, the counterfeit. To, to seize it as Bwana Musiambo has said, but if it is addressed right at the port of entry, then it is all together and it is much easier to intercept. And so for us, uh, we are very much for it, uh, as it would uh, make the enforcement action uh, much simpler. The other aspect is that it does level the playing field. I think uh, we listened to the speakers during the plenary session and they talked about uh, the issue of intellectual property rights. Um, these counterfeiters are lazy people who are stealing ideas made by other people. They have done research and development, produced a product, so they take the shortcut and copy that product to put it in your hands. So for us it would be leveling the, the playing field so that uh, the government, as is represented here, is the referee and making sure that we are all playing by, by the same rules. The third aspect is that uh, this uh, recordation would ensure government revenues. As you know, counterfeiters uh, do not pay tax. They, they not only avoid using their brains to develop their, their product, but they also avoid paying tax. And, and so for, for us as Kenyans, we should support this because it does ensure government revenues for our own social development. Uh, that is building roads, schools, hospitals, etc. So we, we should all rally behind uh, this uh, recordation initiative. It is good for all of us. Fourth, is that it would make uh, it easy and fast to identify the real product from, from the counterfeit, particularly for law enforcers. I think it was also observed here that uh, these are some of the difficulties law enforcers get in the field. When you come across counterfeit, how do you tell a counterfeit product from the genuine one? So recordation would uh, greatly help in, in that aspect. And then lastly, uh, maybe this is where I should have started, is for the consumer. We are taking some of this product into our bodies and yet we don't know uh, what the ingredients are, particularly in uh, counterfeit. Some of the ingredients might be harmful and so again, as citizens of this uh, country, we should support this initiative so that uh, we make sure that what we are putting into our bodies, what we are consuming, what we are using, is actually wholesome and will help uh, uh, our bodies. So I, I think uh, th those are the issues. Mm -hmm. Thank very you. Well, very well. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Matano. And, and, and there is comfort knowing that, you know, as members of the Kenya Association of Manufacturer, Manufacturers, which is the largest uh, association of manufacturers in this country that you have embraced this concept of IPR. And now I want to turn to Frida Caberia. I know, uh, you know, the acting executive director of ACA. I know this is a new technology um, where the world is moving to. And uh, do, uh, we, we, as a country, we are joining other members of the global community in the implementation of the recordance of IPR. Who are the other members um, are we joining?
Thank you for that question. Uh, Kenya will not be the first country to implement recordation. We have uh, US, the UK, Indonesia, China, and South Africa. So we are joining a team that is currently leading in the war against counterfeit. And we honestly feel this is the best direction for the anti-counterfeit authority to embrace. So we have seen like in China, they've recorded over 15,000. That was by the end of December last year. So we are learning from the best and we hope to benchmark and really make this country a counterfeit free so that we can um, promote legitimate trade. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Frida Kaberia, the Acting Executive Director uh, at um, Anti-Counterfeit Authority. And now I want to turn to uh, Dr. Akoten, uh, also from uh, the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, and he's the Director of Research and Policy and Public Awareness at ACA. And I want to hear from you, uh, because we've been talking about this system so much, uh, the whole of this morning, and of course now it is afternoon, uh, kindly take us through this, the, the, this whole system. What is it all about? What is IPR recordation? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I'm John Akoten, Director for Research Awareness and Quality Assurance at the Anti-Counterfeit Authority. Uh, that's a very important um, question. And before uh, I answer it, I want to take an analogy with, um, with a child that is born. Uh, when a child is born, of course, uh, you are required by law uh, to register uh, the details about that particular child, the date of birth, the name of that particular uh, child, uh, the parents, the names of the parents as the mother, and probably the mother, or either of the, of the parents, uh, the place of birth. And then later on, when that uh, child reaches uh, of age, uh, he or she required also to get an identity card. So we'll be given an ID number, and then probably later on a PIN number. So when you require services, so all this information is actually uh, registered uh, with a particular government uh, agency. But when you require information or services from the government, then you will be required to record that information in a particular format. So there's a form that you have to fill in. You state your names, your date of birth, probably your parents, the name of your parents, uh, if you are both parents or a single parent, uh, the place of birth, maybe the place where you live, and so on, including even your PIN number. So that's information that actually you are recording for the purposes of getting uh, services from the government. So the same thing also applies also to the intellectual property rights. Uh, as a manufacturer, when you are coming up with... Um, uh, with, with some creativity. If I can give an example of this water, you are, man, you are coming up with water. So in the process of coming up with the, this water, uh, there's a process that uh, you, know, you, you have done, some R&D, you know, in, in coming up with this particular kind of test of that water. So there's something that you have done in it that's different from probably what another company is doing. So that will give you what's called a patent for the production of that particular water. So that patent, you need, to, uh, you need to register it with a particular government agency, and that is the Kenya Industrial Property Institute, that will give you a certificate for ownership of that particular patent. Now, in the same, same product, uh, you may want to give it a name. So in this particular case, probably the name is called uh, Life Plus or Keringet, whatever it is. So that name is a unique name which you want to associate with this particular water. So that's a trademark. Again, you will have also to get registration from KIPI. And uh, this, if you look at the bottle, uh, you may want also to have a, a certain shape that is uh, attractive to consumers, and you may want also to protect that shape, which is an industrial design. So again, you get uh, an industrial design, uh, which is an intellectual property right again from uh, KIPI. So in the end, this particular product has three types of intellectual property. Now, th that intellectual property is what you are registering with KIPI. But for the purpose of enforcement, because people may want to mimic your product, they may want to produce a product and call it uh, uh, maybe Life Plus or Keringet, whatever it is, 
or come up with a product with the same kind of shape and so on. So you may want to protect your product from counterfeiting. And that's why now you are required to record all that information. You tell us what is the name of that particular product, uh, what is the shape, and so on. So the physical features of that particular product is what we want you to record. So basically, IP recordation is a database of information about intellectual property right of a product that's subsisting, either for local manufactured products or imported products, for the purposes of uh, uh, enabling law enforcement agencies to take any proactive action on case of infringement. Mm -hmm. yeah, th thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Akuteng. And I also want to hear from from uh, uh, Wanyama Musiembo. Uh, you know, the fact that you are here is a clear indication that uh, the question of illicit uh, trade and counterfeit, you know, has received the highest recognition from the highest office in the land. Uh, what measures has the office of the president taken to deal with illicit trade at the grassroots? Thank you, th thank you so much, my brother, for that question. Uh, I want to start by reiterating what I mentioned earlier, <coughs> that the uh, primary objective and the main function of government is to protect lives of its citizens and to protect the property of the citizens. And therefore, in line with that, at the highest level of government, issue that comes first is security. And the security is indeed wide. Sometimes we think that security is confined just to arresting one person, maybe for peddling bazaar. But security is indeed wide. It's a whole spectrum. And therefore, to be able to, uh, to address this issue, in answering this question, I want to tell this gathering in this house that government has an elaborate way of managing security issues. And therefore, right from the national government at the top, going down to the grassroots, we have an elaborate security arrangement runs from the top to the regions. Previously, we were calling them provinces, now they are regions. At that level, we have the Regional Security Committee that we were previously calling the Provincial Security Committee. You move down below that regional security team, we have security arrangements at the county level. And that system runs down up to the sublocation level. So at all those levels, we have senior responsible officers that are involved in the management of security matters. And what we are discussing today is a security matter, but we don't want counterfeits that we are fighting counterfeits, that we are protecting Kenyans from illicit. And therefore, at the grassroots from the question, that system is alive and active. And therefore, this issue is just a part of the security and uh, concerns that our officers deal with on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that anything counterfeited is nabbed, is nipped in the bud, and uh, therefore we, we have a system that is very strong, a system that has been tested, and a system that is resilient. And even at our borders, border points, we have the border uh, committees at the entry and the exit points 
we also have specific officers there again working with all the other agencies of government uh, that we have mentioned here we have the KRA at the borders we have the customs and all those arrangements but plus the security arrangements that I've mentioned that therefore that area is properly taken care of of course we do know that in some places our border is porous uh, what we normally call Panya routes we do know that but still even that uh, pa those Panya routes they are under the jurisdiction of the security committees that I've just mentioned that man those areas so I can assure you that indeed all our areas up to the grassroots they are taken care of adequately and we have no reason to believe otherwise thank you all right thank you um wanyama musiambo for that assurance of what your team is doing time now to turn to the plenary and uh we have an opening for two questions who would be the first to go yes So as I said, my name is George Okari. I come from Alisi Hands. We are an association, a federation of many other associations that have come together so that we are able to see how the consumers are also able to, to be protected. First and foremost, I'll take this chance to thank the government for the big efforts that they are doing so that we are able to at least have our country being secure and then there is also the component of health now the government has done a great job to be able to come up with this recognition this is a huge huge step we look at from uh, the consumer's perspective because it's gonna make a huge difference in this country uh, but then my, my my bigger concern is this is a huge effort towards protecting what is coming in uh, the consumers are requesting that what other efforts are being made for the consumers to also be the verifier of the products that the manufacturers are, um, are doing. Please, that effort, any company in the private sector that is also making efforts to be able to assist the consumers to be able to uh, verify the products would be a huge, huge thing that we would really appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. And that question, I think, can be addressed by uh, Dr. Akoten here. Can you give us George Okari for that uh, uh, question? Yes, the IPR recommendation uh, is also meant to empower consumers to identify uh, counterfeit goods just as uh, it's going to empower the law enforcement agencies also uh, to identify you know counterfeit goods whenever they are being imported um currently there's a there's a program which we call the ipmas the intellectual uh, the Inter integrated uh, product marking authentication uh, system which is being uh, developed under the chair of uh, kra and this particular system will enable consumers uh, to identify counterfeit goods even or goods before they purchase them. So it's a system that is ongoing. There's already a bill that uh, has already been uh, approved by the cabinet and I think it has gone now to, uh, to parliament uh, for their discussion and approval. 
and uh, once I've been approved, then we'll be able now to, you know, to, to launch this particular system uh, so that consumers will be empowered now to check uh, any product before they purchase. But currently, uh, we, we still have um, some technologies uh, which consumers can use, for example, in the seed uh, sector, uh, under, the pharmac- uh, under the Kenya Plant Health Inspector Service, this was called the scratch uh, system, where you have to scratch uh, a label before you purchase uh, any, any seed, especially for the, uh, for the smaller packet of seeds, I think between two and five uh, kilograms. Uh, packets because those are the ones that actually are mostly counterfeited. Uh, the, the bigger ones, uh, 20 kilogram uh, packages are not uh, easily counterfeited. So we already have a system that uh, is being used uh, by consumers to check whether the product are counterfeit or not. But what I'm talking about, which is the GOK mark, is going to apply to all kinds of goods and it will make it easier for consumers to identify uh, counterfeit goods. Thank you. Very well, thank you. Uh, let's move to the next question. Yes, gen- uh, the gentleman at the back. Uh, do we have another roaming microphone? Just a minute, I think. Uh, let's pass this microphone to you. Uh, my name is Alex Fantas Wagare. I come from Protection Logics. We work for Unilever, Unilever Kenya, as blood protection agent. So my question was, how will, how will consumer stand to benefit from recordation? Thank you. I think uh, we can just take one more question and then we call it. Yes. How will consumers benefit from the system? Yes, gentlemen. Yeah. Isaac is my name. Uh, I'm a member a committee member on the uh, illicit trade. Uh, Matano is my vice chair. My question is, uh, are there offenses and sanctions? And what are some of these offenses and sanctions? Uh, I think, Akoten, uh, we, have <laughs> we have pressured you a lot today, so uh, if you may. All right, I think those two questions goes to Akoten. Eh? Uh, kindly respond to them. Okay, thank you so much, Alex. Um, yes, consumers are going to benefit immensely because currently, uh, I think one of the major questions that consumers uh, keep on asking is uh, you want us to help you to fight counterfeiting, but then how can we identify uh, counterfeit goods uh, before we purchase? And uh, one of the challenges that we face is uh, how much information then do you uh, share uh, with consumers? For example, if we are talking about water or mobile phones and so on. So what are the features that you need to tell the consumers to help them identify uh, counterfeit goods without revealing too much? Because again, remember, if you, relieve, uh, if, if you, if, if you uh, give more information, uh, there's, there's a uh, there's a possibility that you also, re- uh, I mean, you are, you are also giving out more uh, trade secrets, uh, which now will be counterproductive because uh, some of those consumers might end up becoming again counterfeiters. So then, how much information then do you, do you release to them? So that becomes really a big, big challenge. Uh, with the IPR recordation, we intend to uh, reduce the amount of counterfeit goods coming into the country substantially, almost to zero. And that means that any product that will be found in the shops or within the markets, uh, they will be they will be they will be genuine, and therefore that will make it easier for for consumers to buy products without really caring whether they are uh, should, should I mean w- without them really you know scratching, let's say technology or finding out whether maybe is it a counterfeit, is it genuine, and so on. So we are actually removing 
counterfeit goods uh, from the market and ensuring that any product that is being sold, uh, most likely they are genuine. So that's the bigger uh, benefit, of course, they are going to get. And of course, with that, the issue about health and safety, uh, if products are not counterfeit, if products are not, I mean, I mean if, 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 if they are not counterfeit or they are not even substandard, that means that uh, they'll be protected from health and safety issues. Now, on the side of um, offenses and sanctions, yes, the offenses uh, under Section 32 of the Anti-Counterfeit Act, if you read that particular section, it's really an offense uh, to, if I can uh, go to that particular section, uh, for example, it's an offense under Section uh, 30, 32, for example, J, it's an offense to import goods without recording with ACA. Uh, it's also under uh, subsection uh, 32K. It's an offense to import unbranded uh, goods. Uh, L, it's, uh, it's an offense also to fail to declare the quantity or the intellectual property rights of imported goods. And M, it's also an offense to falsely declare the quantity or IPR of imported uh, goods. Then, of course, if you look at the, the penalties under Section 35 of the Counterfeit Act, uh, if you are a first offender, of course the imprisonment is up to uh, five years and you will pay a fine of at least three times the value of uh, the, the, the goods that have been infringed. And of course if you are a second offender, then uh, the offense, uh, the imprisonment goes up to 15 years and the, the fine goes uh, not less than five times the value of the goods that are in question. Thank you. Very good. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akuten. Uh, do we have any comments from uh, the panel in regard to the questions? Yes, uh, Chair. I think to the question of the gentleman from Unilever around um, what is there to benefit. Remember, if you have come and recorded the Unilever products with us, then it also stops other people doing the same. So your importation is, 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 is way faster, uh, your chances of having counterfeit goods becomes much, much less, and therefore the con consumer is, is, is almost guaranteed that they'll get the right product at the right, ti uh, at the right, at the right time, there are not going to be any delays, and secondly, they're also assured that there's going to be your, your, pro your products are counterfeit free. Because this is what worries us about, uh, as consumers, sometimes you go to buy a product and you hear, this one has had a controversy, you leave it. And maybe it's a genuine product. But if you know these people have sort of, they've recorded and, you know, things are seamless, you'll be, as a consumer, you'll have a lot of confidence. And this is why we are trying to say, let us work together to make sure that we record and, and therefore we stop the importation of, of other goods. It will also reduce your costs in, 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 in suspicion because this is me, I'm recorded, your goods will come in quicker. Very good. Um, any other comments? Because we want to. Yes, um, Langat. Okay, uh, I think um, this is an opportunity for us, even as private sector, to actually have uh, and also for multi agency, to have a one government uh, approach. We all th do our business through the single window, the trade facilitation platform, we do through ICMS. Um, probably it's a high time that now this is uh, part of the process of uh, importation and exportation of goods so that we have all products uh, recorded under that uh, framework so that if you are importing anything that is not uh, registered, um, you are forced to register, then we will actually know who is importing what. Then we can be able to block um, any goods that are not um, in compliance um, with the act and I think those are the, some of the benefits that we get from this as a multi-agency but we also request that even as we do multi-agency um, then we need to involve uh, private sector players because currently even as we are talking today we are dealing with the effects of multi-agency uh, um, operations that happened in 2018 where we still have containers that are being held and now shippers are being forced to pay um, for damage for the shipping line. So those are issues that I think we can deal with between government and private sector. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so very much indeed, team, for finding time to be here and of course responding to those questions. And now the real work begins for uh, importers to register their IP and of course to ensure that we rid the country of illicit products.
Thank you very much indeed for, for your time and of course for responding to those questions. Uh, you may now take your seat. Oh, uh, Madam Caberia, yeah. you have a, all right. Let's hear it from uh, the Executive Director. Thank you. Uh, I would like our PS representative, Dr. Liniro, to make some clarification. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, just thought that there's something that we needed to clarify on this. What you are launching today is the recordation, which is voluntary, so it's not really compulsory. However, from 1st of January next year, we'll actually start the actual enforcement. So for now, we are not enforcing, but encouraging that you do the recordation voluntarily. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Liniru, for making that clarification that uh, from January 2023, uh, the government is going to make it mandatory for all importers. So thank you very much for that. And at this point, we come to the end of our official program for the day. Uh, we appreciate your time, your patience, and of course, and finding it uh, good to be with us throughout the morning and uh, this afternoon. And I, I want to invite Agnes Karengo to move the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Bona uh, uh, Events Coordinator, uh, our chief guest, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. It is uh, with a lot of uh, joy that uh, I stand here this afternoon to pass a vote of thanks on behalf of the entire anti-counterfeit authority. And I wish to start by acknowledging our guests for their participation in this event and more so because each one of them has walked with us in the journey, has been walking with us as we uh, undertake the combating of counterfeits in the country. Uh, Mr. Wanyama Musiambu, our chair, Dr. Bruno, uh, Mr. Kiambi, through the county commissioner's office, and Eric Timea. Thank you, thank you all so, so much. And before I go to the other uh, uh, partners, I would like to request all of us, the guests, and joined by the table of Dr. Wambua, to kindly just stand uh, in acknowledgement of what we have done today. Sir, you have launched what is called recordation. I request that in remembrance of this, Frida will always have this at the entrance of the ACA offices. And therefore, I request that you come here. Uh, you will hand it over to her as a mandate of continue. We have launched, we have started, continue to undertake recordation of intellectual property rights. So I request that we stand um, uh, uh, facing the people so that they see what is happening. Sir, I request that you hand that over to Frida and Madam Chair as a symbol of, yes, we have launched, it will continue, we are more than committed. I think, Madam Frida, you'll go to the other side so that you receive it with the Madam Chair. And uh, remember, when you're given by Mr. Musiambu, then it is not just a symbol you're being given, it is uh, an order. <laughs> Thank you, let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate that. Thank you, thank you so, so much. And yes, on their behalf, yes, we shall continue to undertake recordation. You may sit. Thank you all. As we continue, I'd like to pass a very special uh, vote of thanks to Trademark East Africa. Uh, Eric, you'll pass this message that Anti-Counterfeit Authority really appreciates the journey you have walked with us. You supported a milestone that we had been 
um, yearning to undertake. That is the National Baseline Survey on Illicit Trade. And yes, you supported us, so we know where we stand, we know we, where we are going. We also have the observatory, and more than this, even the recordation system that we are launching today. So we really do appreciate that, and therefore, please pass our regards to uh, your office. Uh, USBP was supposed to be here, and in absentia, I also wish to appreciate them as uh, our development uh, partners. I would want to acknowledge and really, really appreciate the government agencies who are here today. Anti-counterfeit authority has a mandate of collaborations. And yes, we do collaborate. And as a symbol of that, here today, we have more than 15 government institutions represented. Let's give them a loud of applause, please. And I'll just mention uh, maybe some of them very quickly. We have KRA, KEBS, Kipra, PCPB, Kekobo, Keninvest, Kipi. Uh, we have uh, CAK, PPB, uh, KEPSA, Weights and Measures, among others. Kenya Wine uh, Agencies Limited are here. And Kenya Seed. Kenya Seed, they are also here, all the way from Kitale. These are stakeholders that we really, really work with, particularly during the planting seasons. Counterfeits can kill our agriculture, can kill our uh, food production, and therefore we work with them very, very closely. Thank you for finding it important to be here with us. In the private sector, we have a very, uh, we have many of you that are seated here. I'll just mention the associations. We have Kenya Association of Manufacturers, who again have supported us all the way, not just today, but have really, uh, really worked with us. We have uh, Agrochemicals Association of Kenya. I know you're here. We have Sea Traders Association. Uh, Kepsa is here. Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and if they don't mention you, we really, really do appreciate you. Let's give a hand for the private sector. And one that is on a special category as private sector is the Micro and Small Enterprises uh, uh, Alliance, uh, an association of importers. This recognition will definitely definitely also benefit you and will continue to engage. Let's give a hand for MSME Alliance. Here today, we have represented the county government of Machakos, and I request Dr. Tari that you kindly just stand and wave to the people kindly, Dr. Wambua. A special recognition because we have reached out to the county government of Machakos through the Department of Industrialization, Trade and Innovations for which Daktari represents. And last week as we launched the activities for this World Anti-Counterfeit Day, they brought together stakeholders, almost 400 of them in different rooms, but one very, very remarkable where the county government officers really participated. Thank you so much, Daktari, and please pass our regards to Waziri also. Thank you. Let's appreciate uh, Machakos County. We have consumers represented. I know we are all consumers. If you are not a consumer, please put up your hand. If you are a consumer of anything, put up your hand. Yes, we appreciate you now in your capacity as a consumer. But yes, we have some consumer organizations uh, and I acknowledge Halisi Hans who are here representing others and I also acknowledge Kofek who was supposed to be here but were not able to make it for reasons. It is for the sake of the consumers also that we continue to combat uh, counterfeiting and therefore we appreciate you as a consumer and from where you are. And lastly, and not the least, actually not the last last, very important for this event to be heard, for our message to be heard out there, we need the media fraternity. And therefore we really, really do appreciate 
some of you were here as early as 7 a.m. And therefore, thank you so much. A special thanks to KBC. And of course, we know all the other stations are also represented. Thank you, and please continue to pass on the message. And for our guests, I know the media would want to see you uh, for a little brief after this. We shall give you that opportunity. And last but not the least, this event was organized by officers from the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, and not just the event, for the recognition program to, where, to be where it is, that we have said, yes, we are here, we have launched. You can now record your IPR. As a consumer, you can go into the system and you're able to see some of the trademarks to be able to uh, differentiate between genuine and counterfeits. The Anti-Counterfeit Authority members of staff Thank you, thank you so much for the effort uh, that you have put in this and the journey has just begun. Let's appreciate Anti-Counterfeit Authority. So with that, uh, if I have not mentioned any of you in all the categories that I have mentioned, kindly bear with me, but I want to appreciate each one of you as an individual, not just from the institutions that you come from, but also as an individual. Thank you so much, and God bless you for being here, for accepting to be with us, and can you be one of us in spreading the gospel of we need to appreciate the value of genuine and do away with counterfeits. Thank you, thank you so much. As I finish, just want to appreciate to mention that uh, after this we'll have lunch you'll be guided by the ladies at the door and therefore but uh, ideally uh, yeah you'll be guided at the door so most welcome for lunch please don't leave uh, I know the media people might want to rush and file something so if they rush you can call us for yeah we can have a cup of tea later in our office so enjoy your lunch enjoy the rest of the afternoon and once again thank you thank you so so much and may god bless you back to you mr kemani uh thank you very much indeed agnes and uh she's reminding me that she also wants to appreciate me you have the opportunity Yes, this is one person who is almost always forgotten. We have had it good, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, so to you, uh, Mr. O'Brien Kemani, I'm sure when you saw him, you felt like, hi, why are you not uh, saying hello to me? Did anyone feel that? Yes, so he's one of us in the KBC, and we really, really do appreciate the work that you have done for us here today. Thank you so much. And with that, I also forgot Maroon Commandos. Let's appreciate all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without you. Asante Nisana and of course, even the venue where we are. Thank you all. Very good. Thank you very much. And I do appreciate for giving me this opportunity to be part of you this morning and of course this afternoon. And now I know the lunch is ready and I'm going to invite Elijah Ruto to come and say a word uh, on behalf of, um, or to pray for food actually. Uh, so. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, mine is so simple. Uh, let's rise up for a word of prayer. <clears throat> Okay, let's believe and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this afternoon you have given us. My dear Father, you started with us this morning. We have seen your faithfulness and your goodness from the start, even until now. Lord, we pray that, my dear Father, as we go to implement the many things that we have gone through, and even as an authority, as we work on fighting counterfeits, may you give us the strength, give us the guidance, give us the wisdom, and help us, my dear Father. May you be with us and care for us, dear God. Even this afternoon, as we go for lunch, we pray that you may bless that food. 
We even thank you for the rest of the day. We ask for that you may bless us, you may be with us, and care for us throughout this afternoon, and the rest of the day, and the rest of the week. May you bless us and be with us. We pray this trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you very much. Enjoy. Indeed, that marks the end of uh, the uh, function this afternoon here as we commemorate the World Anti-Counterfeit Day. And just that you know, as a stakeholder, trader, as well as an importer, you have up until January 2023 to have registered your details onto that particular program that has been launched today. It's the IPR recordation system that has already gone live and this is a move by the anti-counterfeit authority to just stem illicit trade that has already been identified not only as a threat to social economic development but also has been termed as corruption and very detrimental to the local industry i'm regina manyara we have been live from the crown plaza so i take you back to broadcasting house for normal programming All the Anti-Counterfeit Authority, ACA, will be marking the World Anti-Counterfeit Day on the 15th of June, 2022, a culmination of activities that began in Machakos County in collaboration with their Department of Trade. ACA is the parastatal ensuring no counterfeits find their way into the Kenyan market. The day will be marked with the launch of the Recordation Program, an innovation that will enable businesses and consumers to identify counterfeits from an electronic database. Say no to counterfeits for your prosperity, health and safety. This event will be live on KBC Channel 1. day over 15 million members are transforming Africa equity Karibu member